Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Now, this video is based on the chapter Laws of Motion NCRT for class 11 students and it is a introductory video on this chapter. Now, the Laws of Motion chapter is based on study of the three laws and starts with the concept of force goes on and then relates force with momentum and then how this force concept of force is used to analyze the motion of single bodies or connected bodies now prior to this we have studied kinematics now in kinematics we studied the motion of bodies without taking into account their force we studied the motion motion study but without taking into account the force the concept of force was not introduced okay now here in dynamics dynamics we are going to study the motion of bodies single body or connected body by taking into account the force so in kinematics no concept of force was introduced but in dynamics the concept of force will be introduced now when this term force comes into our mind, we think of two terms, a push or a pull. So basically force in simple language, it is a push or a pull which changes the state of a body. A body in state of rest may start moving, a body in state of motion may start moving with a greater velocity or with a reduced velocity or it may stop moving altogether. So this is the simple concept of force. Now force is of two types basically. One is the contact force, contact force and the other one is the non-contact force non-contact force contact force means like suppose if I have to if this pen is placed and I need to move this pen then I need to apply force on the pen so this pen will move only when a force comes in contact with this pen non-contact force is like force acting between charges so if you have two charges q1 q2 so if q1 is brought to vicinity of q2 then Q2 will experience a repulsive force. Now in this case, see Q1 can exert a force on Q2 without coming into contact with Q2. So such forces are called non-contact forces. We will study about these non-contact forces in class 12 in chapter electrostatics, magnetism and all those things. But the, the chapter or this class 11 chapter laws of motion, it is basically based on study of these contact forces. Another important term which we will face in this chapter is mass. Like suppose you have a block of mass 100 kg placed on a horizontal surface and say you have a coin placed on again a horizontal surface. Now to bring this body of mass 100 kg to motion you require more amount of force but to bring this coin into motion you require a much lesser force similarly if both these a coin and this 100 kg mass both are moving then in order to bring them from state of motion to state of rest greater amount of force will be required for a massive body so this is how we can compare the mass now in 1700 century newton he developed these three laws of motion based on the work of galileo galileo so primary work on the concept of this laws of motion was done by galileo and 
Newton he worked on the theory of Galileo and gave the three laws of motion. So these these are the, this is the introduction to this chapter. So these are the basic idea you need to have before we start this chapter laws of motion. So then we have the first law of motion Newton's first law of motion. This law was actually stated by uh, Galileo, but then it was modified by Newton. So according to first law of motion. Now before stating the law, let's see one example. Suppose this is a horizontal surface, perfectly smooth surface. Okay. Suppose this is a ice surface. There is no friction and this is a ball. Now if this ball is acted upon by some force, now initially there is no force. So this ball is in state of rest. Now if this is acted upon by force F, it will start roll moving in the forward direction. And since there is no friction, it will continue to move. Okay. Now if this is surface is very long surface this will continue to move forever so the first law the statement for the first law goes as so the statement is every body continues in its state of rest or uniform motion in a straight line unless acted upon by an external force if this body it is not acted upon by this body is not acted upon by any force this force is zero then it will stay in a state of rest forever now in order to bring this body from state of rest to motion you need to apply an external force and this state of rest or uniform motion in a straight line that means if your body is moving in a straight line and if you wish to change its direction you need to apply a force otherwise in absence of force it will continue to move in a straight line okay so this is the statement for first law of motion now from this we can also say that if net force is zero if net force is zero the acceleration is also zero acceleration of the body will also be zero so that means now acceleration is rate of change in velocity so that means if you wish to change the velocity now velocity can be changed in two ways either you change the magnitude of velocity or you change the direction of velocity third case is like both magnitude and direction is changing so either if you need, need to change the magnitude of velocity that is from state of rest to state of motion or if you increase the velocity if you wish to increase the velocity you need to apply force similarly if you wish to change the direction of velocity you need to apply force if there is no force acting then the velocity magnitude will not change the direction of velocity will also not change so this is the first law of motion this this is law is also called first law is also called law of inertia law of inertia okay now this term inertia it is of three types three types inertia of rest inertia of rest inertia of motion inertia of direction inertia of direction that is object at state of rest will remain at rest object in state of uniform motion will remain in state of uniform motion object moving in a straight line will continue to move in this state of linear motion in straight line unless there is some external force so we say that force is an external agent which is responsible for changing the state of rest or uniform motion of a body so this is newton's first law of motion now before we proceed to the second law Newton's second law of motion we need to understand a term called momentum
it is denoted by the symbol p it is a vector quantity now momentum it is the amount of motion contained in a body okay it is the amount of motion amount of motion contained in a body and mathematically it is expressed as p is equal to product of mass and velocity okay so its dimensional formula will be mass is m velocity is lt inverse 1 so this is the dimensional formula and unit mass is kg velocity is meter per second now suppose we have two bodies one heavier body and a one lighter body and suppose they have same momentum okay so this is heavier body m h v h is equal to h for heavier m l v l l for lighter so this is a heavier body this is a lighter body and suppose they have same momentum so m h v h is equal to m l v l so this gives v l by v h is equal to m h by m l now obviously heavier body mass will be greater than lighter body mass so this quantity is greater than this what quantity so this implies v l greater than v h so the lighter body will have greater velocity or conversely we will say that the heavier body will have smaller velocity uh, condition is when they have same momentum lighter body and heavier body they have same momentum then the lighter body will have greater velocity so these are some basic concepts of momentum we will call it linear momentum because in the chapter rotation mo uh, motion we are going to get one more term that is called angular momentum so this is momentum or simply linear momentum because this is associated with the linear motion of the body for body moving with velocity v mass m momentum is p is equal to m into v so this is the basic concept of momentum now the second law the first law indicates that when there is no force there is object will remain in state of rest or motion so if the force is zero the object is either in state of rest if it is in state of rest it will continue in state of rest if it is moving then it will continue to move with uniform velocity uniform velocity that means so what happens when force acts so when force acts if it is in a state of rest it will start moving okay if it is moving already moving so there will be a change in the velocity so either the velocity the magnitude of velocity will change or the direction of velocity will change or both the magnitude and direction of velocity will change so now that means if the velocity is undergoing a change that means there is a change in momentum so basically this second law of motion relates force and momentum and the statement is the rate of change in momentum is directly proportional to the applied force and the change in momentum takes place in the direction of application of force okay so mathematically i can write this as f proportional to dp by dt now momentum p is mv so this gives f proportional to d by dt of m v now if i remove this proportionality constant and if i take take it to be 1 then in that case this will become f is equal to d by dt of mv 
and that is equal to m dv by dt plus v dm by dt okay now this is the general expression for force now in case mass is constant mass is constant so for that dm by dt will be equal to 0 then force will be m this quantity will be 0 so it will be f is equal to m dv by dt that gives f is equal to ma so f equal to ma is the relation for force when mass is constant now in case the velocity is not changing but mass is changing the velocity is constant so dv by dt will be equal to 0 so this term will be 0 so we will have f is equal to v dm by dt so the, in this case the particle is moving with constant velocity but its mass is decreasing at rate decreasing or increasing at rate dm by dt so this is the expression for force when mass is undergoing a change but velocity is constant this is the case when mass is constant but velocity is changing okay so this formula or this concept will be using for obtaining various uh, motion related concepts on uh, rocket propulsion so as the rocket goes its mass keeps on decreasing so this will deal later on and this is the general concept more popular concept f equal to ma for a body moving with acceleration a mass if the mass is constant f equal to ma so acceleration is rate of change in velocity now this rate of change in velocity is brought about by the action of force f so this is the mathematical form of newton's second law of motion now from this concept of this relation f equal to ma we have the dimensional formula for forces f equal to ma m is mass is m acceleration is l t inverse 2 so this is the dimensional formula for force and how about its unit mass is kg acceleration is meter per second square so it is kg meter per second square or it is simply newton so 1 newton is equal to 1 kg meter per second square okay now that means how do you define 1 newton force 1 newton force is the force which when acts on a body of mass 1 kg produces an acceleration of 1 meter per second square okay in cgs the unit is unit of force is dyne so 1 dyne in that case force 1 dyne mass will be in gram so 1 gram into 1 centimeter per second square so 1 dyne is the force acting on a body of mass 1 gram producing an acceleration of 1 centimeter per second square now this newton and dyne they are related by the relation 1 newton is equal to 10 power 5 dyne so this are, these are the few basic concepts related to the term force and second law of motion so these this is the introductory video for this chapter laws of motion i hope it is beneficial to the students watching this and if you have liked this video please do share and uh, you can also uh, comment your views with regard to the contents of this video good luck